At this point, the coronavirus needs no introduction. Spreading from Wuhan in China from potentially November 2019 to spreading to more countries in December, and now as of March, it being classified as a global pandemic. This virus, also known as the COVID-19, is actually just one of several coronaviruses. And this name, COVID-19, is for Coronavirus 2019. And in this video, I want to look at some of the other examples of the coronaviruses, because this isn't actually the only coronavirus that the world has seen, although it is by far the most infectious and the deadliest that we have. Now, the name coronavirus, and you thought, how can I get etymology into a video about the coronavirus, actually comes from the word corona, which in Latin means crown. It also means crown in Spanish and potentially Portuguese as well. Now, the reason it's called a coronavirus or a crown virus is because of these glycoproteins, they're like pillars that stick out from the virions, and the virions are what infects the cells of the host. So that's why it's called the crown, because looking around the outside, it looks like a halo or a crown. Scientists have actually known about coronaviruses since the 1960s, although it's thought that their most common recent ancestor actually is dates back right to the 8000 BC. So a very long time ago, 10,000 years ago now. And, you know, to put this into perspective, because it's a very random date in the past that not many people can link to an event that happened. It's about the same time that agriculture started to become the, the dominant form of life in South America. That's how long ago this was. Now, it's thought that coronaviruses may have originated in bats, and they started off in bats, but then the bats were able to pass on the coronavirus to animals like birds. And this is often where we find viruses that become deadly to people, is that they start off in bats and then move on to birds and other animals and eventually humans. We saw it with Ebola, for example, in Africa, when that happened, as well as things like bird flu. Now, what happens is that a species will become infected by a virus, and a virus is a, a sort of parasite that, that lives off the host. And in this case, it's in bats. So bats, they obviously, some will die from the virus, but others will get the virus, and then they will get better. And at this point, they will have the antibodies, and they spread this around the bat population. And at some point, all the bats will have had it, and they will have passed on. So they'll become immune to the disease. And what we call this in animals is that this becomes a reservoir of a disease. So the disease is present in these animals. The virus is present, but it's obviously not having an effect on them because they're all immune to it, though it continues to live on. Now, what can happen, however, is that one bat species can pass on this disease to another bat species due to contact between them. And then, of course, that bat species has the same process of the virus that's going on. What can also happen, however, is that a bat species can pass this on to another type of animal. For example, a cat species or a bird species as I mentioned before and this actually happened in 2003 when we got in China um, in Yunnan and, and in other areas in the south of China there was an outbreak of a particular coronavirus and it's thought that this was caused by kivet cats which are a wild uh, species of cat that probably were infected by bats with a coronavirus and this virus became known as SARS which stands for the severe acute respiratory syndrome the reason it got this name is because the coronaviruses often attack the respiratory cells and cells in the, the system to do with breathing, and so they cause respiratory tract infections in humans as well as in some of the other animals that they infect, and this makes it really hard for people to breathe, and that is indeed what people who are suffering from the current coronavirus have said to have survived, is that it's just incredibly hard to breathe, like breathing through a paper bag with one lung, and that's because these these viruses are specifically attacking the lungs and the operatives that we need to breathe and that's why it's incredibly deadly for people who are smokers for example or people who have difficulty breathing. So the SARS virus actually ended up infecting a lot of people in Asia and other countries as well but most were in China around 5,000 um, of whom 349 died as well as Hong Kong and Taiwan. And of those who died, it was, again, elderly people who were most at risk from this virus. 
Now, it's actually thanks to the work of an Italian doctor, of Carlo Urbani. Um, he raised the alarm for the SARS virus when he started to see uh, signs of it appearing in his hospital. And that quick response really helped to bring down the number of infectious cases. Um, and they were able to contain the virus when it spread outside of China as well. But unfortunately, he died. So I thought it was very um, an honorable thing for him to do, having dedicated his life and given his life to st stopping this virus, that I had to mention that there. Although in 2012, it should be mentioned, after the containment, it had been about a decade since the SARS outbreak, there was actually another outbreak, and this time it was in the Arabian Peninsula, and it's thought to have been caused by camels who were infected by bats once again with a different type of coronavirus. And the camels acted as a reservoir, but then contact between humans and camels in the Arabian Peninsula led to the virus adapting and then jumping over to humans as well. And they actually were able to trace these bats to, I believe, Egyptian tomb bats that uh, acted as a reservoir for this coronavirus. And this one became known as MERS, uh, which is the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. So again, affecting the same respiratory tract and causing respiratory tract infections as the SARS virus and as the current virus is doing as well. Actually, this one was interesting because this one found that the conditions for it to spread in were in hospitals. So it was because of being clumsy with how they were handling patients of this. And of course, no fault to the doctors because they hadn't actually seen this before. So they didn't realize that people had it. They were incubated with it, incubated with it, and then they spread it on to other people as well. Um, and this caused uh, uh, quite a few deaths. There were several outbreaks uh, in the Arabian Peninsula, as mentioned, in Saudi Arabia. Um, a lot of people died, uh, as well as in Jordan and in South Korea. There was It was also brought over there. But it was luckily brought under control. Now, in 2019, of course, in November and December, we had the outbreak of COVID-19, of the coronavirus 2019 Due to the nature of the coronavirus, many of us will now be facing time in quarantine or self-isolation. I am myself going to be in self-isolation for another six days. And so with this in mind, it can be easy to get sort of swamped with it all. But actually, we can also use this as an opportunity, and that's what I'm doing. And that's why I want to talk a little bit about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Now, if you're trapped in your room, Skillshare would be the perfect addition, because basically Skillshare is an online learning community that offers a lot of different classes for your real lives, that you can move forward with your creative pursuits. And being trapped in your room is really the perfect opportunity to do this. Now, recently, I've been looking at Thomas Frank's class, which I mentioned earlier, and this is actually a class about productivity how to better use your time because I'm thinking if I'm going to be in here for a long time I want to make sure that I'm utilizing this with my university degree for example with the YouTube channel and other things that I've got going on in my life I want to make sure I'm really making the most of that time both now and after I come out from self-isolation so I've really enjoyed Thomas Frank's class and I would say that actually Skillshare for you there is a special offer which I'll mention in a second but really an annual subscription is less than $10 a month and really if you're going to be very productive that'll actually pay out in your favor in the long run. Now, the first 500 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will actually get a two-month free trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity more fully and make the most of your time and learn that new skill that you always wanted to. So do check it out. It's on the screen there as well. And it'll be in the description. And a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, everyone. So thank you very much for watching this video. I know this is just more coronavirus feed for on your notifications which isn't always great because it is you know quite stressful for a lot of people and, and very dangerous for others but I thought I'd look into the history of of the other coronaviruses that have occurred throughout history so the SARS and the MERS outbreaks as well and what happened there and a little bit about how these spread now if you're interested in this topic because perhaps you just want to look at my channel for things that aren't related to all the crisis that's going on at the moment which I would completely appreciate but if you are I've recently looked into the Black Death as well as part of my archaeology um, uh, supervision work in Cambridge so it's possible to draw some distinctions uh, and some similarities between the two now if that's a video that you'd be interested in please let me know in the comments below and, and I'll look into making that about how these viruses spread from certain animals to people and some similarities that you see there so thank you very much for watching please stay safe everyone look after each other um, and remember not to stress too much all right this has been Hilbert and this has been Hilbert no I'm Hilbert and this has been the history